Hey, how's it going? I'm Matt from WebBank. Here at WebBank, we talk about health, wealth, relationships, and so much more. Um, in today's video, we're going to talk about 10 tips to increase your credit score. Now, question, why is your credit score important, right? Depending on your age, I bet you think nothing about your credit score at all. I mean, it doesn't ever go through mind at all. But it is one of the most important things. I've made a video before about it. I'm uh, not quite as in depth in this, and we were outside. Um, it gets cold in New England, obviously. But your credit score is massively important because, in order to do anything, um, rent an apartment, um, s some jobs check your credit score. I mean, pretty much anything. If you want to buy a car, unless you got boatloads of cash, you're not going to buy a car. Unless you got boatloads of cash, you're, you're going to have a hard time getting into an apartment. I mean, it, it, in America, credit affects everything, and honestly, it can change your life. When I was crawling and scratching my way back up, the first thing I did, right? I didn't save money to buy a car. I saved money and, well, I didn't really save it. I, I immediately started paying off credit. I have a pedal bike in here in the studio. I might even show it in this video. But I was scratching and clawing my way back because I lost everything. And I had so many disadvantages of me at this point because of that. And my credit score was the first thing I was working on. Yes, it was long, strenuous, painful, almost embarrassing, because uh, at one point I used to sit there and think, whatever, right? Let it go to the debt collectors. Who gives up? You know, it just doesn't matter, but it does matter. It is, it affects every aspect of our life. And if you want any true financial success, a credit score is it. I mean, when I sold cars, you could literally tell, I mean, in banks can too, where a person is in their life, how they're feeling, you know, like how bad or good their life is based off of their credit score. If they were, whatever, starting to pay off debt and their credit score started to go up, that meant their life was going a little better and good and so on and so forth. And because of that, that I mean, it bought me a car when I was riding a pedal bike with a flat tire on the back, a uh, little rope, yeah, I mean, rusted up, junk, riding to, at 5 a.m. to some crappy job that paid minimum, I mean, just to crawl my way back up to where, to where I am today. And I, I'm still not quite where I was before, but at the end of the day, your credit is massively important and that's why we're talking about it. Check your credit report. See what's dragging you down. Honestly, it was hard. First time I ever did it, I, whatever. Credit Karma is a great resource. There's tons of other ones too. You have three credit bureaus. A couple of them, I think Experian has a credit booster, by the way, which I'll talk about later. But you're cr seeing what you have on there and what's negatively affecting you is massively important. Before, you need to see what your problems are because honestly, some of those stats could be from forever ago. So. First step is find out what's dragging you down and negotiate it. It's, it's massively important to figure out exactly what you have going on and call and see if you can figure something out, which we'll talk about more obviously. But see what's dragging you down. You don't need any more dead weight than life already gives you. Check your federal student loans. If you went to school at all, student loans can drag your credit score down massively and honestly they exchange banks so whoever you originally had your student loans through whatever six months later could have been sold to another person and then another person and then another person and another person you need to stay on top of that i mean that's my biggest fear i'm about to go to um i mean i've done my bunch of learning but i'm about to go to filmmaking school and for me finding grants and using possibly my military benefits and everything I possibly can to eliminate that debt because our the second pandemic in America is student loan debt. It is a plague that is massively affecting everybody across the world. I mean, some my buddy who went to school for pharmacy, he pays, I don't even know, like 1,400 or, or two grand a month or maybe even more just for student loan debts, like wow. Some people don't even make that in a month. So check your federal student loan debts, figure it out, and make a plan. Currently, because of the pandemic, which is great, they are, whatever, they're on hold currently, which is great for a lot of you. I personally don't have that debt yet, but just remember that right now, you have a great opportunity to work on all of your other stuff while the pandemic's going on because all of your student loan debt is frozen at the moment. So take advantage of that situation it can only help you. I mean, you can, the pandemic comes with all kinds of bad, but there can be good within it. You know what I mean? They, they froze student loan debt. So use that money to pay off all the other things. Follow the 30-10 credit card rule. What is the 30-10 credit card rule? 30-10 credit card rule is keeping, so 
you want three forms of revolving credit. That may be your car, your credit card, and whatever, say another credit card. But those credit cards, if you want, so yeah, you think you have a credit card, right? And you think it's bettering your, um, bettering your credit score, but if you're below, I mean, if you're above 30 or 10%, 30 is the minimum requirement. 10 is the best requirement. And that's over the course of the whole group of them. So you say you have whatever, $1,000 in credit cards or $2,000. Well, let's, let's use 1,000 for example. If it's whatever, if the, the com, uh, combined amount is whatever, 10% between the two of them, your credit score will increase and increase and increase and increase. A lot of people don't know these little rules because we're not taught these things in school. We're taught about math and English and all these other things. But follow the 30 10 rule. It will greatly benefit your credit score. Tools at your disposal. Currently, there is so many tools at your disposal. I mean, I get things in all the time in the mail um, from one main financial. I mean, you, you gotta be smart about what tools you use. So, for example, Credit Karma is great. It, it, it won't give you your exact credit score, so don't get, don't whatever, like freak out when you look at your credit score and it's like horrifically low. Credit Karma is far off from being correct as far as credit score, but it will give you a user-friendly version of what you need to get rid of and what you need to do and how you need to help, how it can help you. I think they even have other programs to expedite the debt relief and I mean, there's there's a th thousand things. I, I, that's how I first start, I started working on my credit. I mean, I fixed my credit three times in life and finally it stuck. But use all the tools at your disposal. Experian has um, credit card or uh, credit booster. There's all kinds of different programs out there. I mean, we live in whatever, 2021. There's tons of apps and all kinds of other things that you can use to help you build your credit score without any knowledge at all. Credit Karma will literally tell you step by step or what you need to do exactly to the T. Set bill reminders. What do, you, what do I mean by set bill reminders? Either A, do auto pay on everything and just write it down or memorize it if you can, um, or even just set reminders in your phone. I know if you're at a point I was struggling, right, and I knew certain places could take my bill a day late or a day, you know, a few days later and it wouldn't affect my credit score, but there's a book called The 4-Hour Work Week, and one of the biggest things about all of it is making sure that all of your life is as automated as absolutely possible so that you can stop worrying about the little things like making sure you're on time for this or making sure you're on time to pay this or whatever it may be. So set reminders, keep on track of it. It will make a massive difference. Honestly, paying your bills on the exact day or forgetting a day or two or three or four or however it may be can be a massive difference from your life being crappy to your life being great because you're driving a brand new car at the same price. I mean, I couldn't tell how many times I've seen people in auto loans. Right? I mean, I've sold cars to people that were in auto loans that the interest rate was absolutely horrendous and that's the only way they could buy a vehicle because they were cash strapped, um, because they were living paycheck to paycheck, because they weren't doing anything to benefit themselves or further themselves or whatever, put themselves in a better financial situation. A lot of people are closed-minded. Stop being closed-minded. There's a vast world out there. If I can crawl my way back up from all the things that I've been through, you can absolutely do it. I mean, if I got into the half of it, it, it would blow your mind. So set report reminders or just automate your life because when everything's automated and you don't have to worry about it, it's just all doing itself. I mean, it's important to check every once in a while to make sure that whatever you're uh, I don't know if you've had a gym membership and you're just not using it and four years later you realize that you just paid three or four grand to go for a place that you haven't touched once because you've been going to another gym or whatever. But So automate your life or set reminders because it can make the difference between uh, whatever, your, your score can jump 30 points or more negatively or up based off of those payments or you can get more um, whatever, higher limits on your credit score by pay making payments on time. I mean, when I first started calling back, Capital One will, would be the first one to give you a credit card and they, whatever, I, I paid off the debt, I negotiated it obviously because that's the only way to go. But as soon as I negotiated it off, they immediately gave me an offer for a credit card. Um, and what I did was I made five on-time payments and they gave me more money. It went from 500 to 1,000 and then so on and so on and so on. 
and during my rough times, if I didn't have that money stacked away in the bank, prepared because whatever, a certain industry wasn't making it and they're laying off jobs or the businesses were closing or whatever it may be, uh, the credit cards could hold me over while I use the cash to pay for other bills or vice versa, you know what I mean? Like, it gives you more to play with and be safe with. So, set point reminders, be smart. Thank you for sticking around this long, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Honestly, as the journey goes on, it gets better and better and better. I hope you feel the same way. I mean, I looked at one of my first videos here in the studio. It was horrific. I mean, honestly, if you guys want a good laugh, look back. I mean, this was all wavy and garbage. But So it's becoming more and more of a passion to the point where I'm actually thinking about going to film school. I mean, I've picked up and learned tons of stuff through other forms of courses and books and so on and so forth. But... I love it so much that I'm actually going to go to film school and really pursue my dream because it's become a passion of mine. But I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I do. Don't forget to give me one of these. Subscribe. Let's get on the next one, guys. Get a secured credit card. If you, so you need to have three forms of revolving credit for your credit score to actually grow or evolve or do anything. So for me, I have my car loan and I have two credit cards and then Everybody thinks their phone bills and stuff like that are the same thing, but they're not. Um, so you need to have as close as you possibly can to three forms of revolving credit. So what I would do is if, if you're in dire need, whatever, to try and get this process all started, you can get a secured credit card, whatever. They'll ask you to pay a certain amount, but it's pretty much like your money is going onto a credit card in which you accrue interest, which sounds insane, right? But it will help you build your credit card or your credit score, which will then lead to you getting offers from Chase and um, some of the some of the bigger and better some of the some of the bigger and better um, credit card companies. And then next thing you know, your credit score is rising through the roof, right? Because you made that one little sacrifice of getting a secured credit card. So just if you have to, do it. I mean, try and find if if you're starting to pay off your debt and everything's going good. Try to stay away from secured credit cards unless you have to. Unless you're whatever in the beginning phases of trying to get your credit rebuilt, it is a great tool to use. So use it. Debt validation. What is debt validation? That is kind of like we talked before. Uh, credit Karma, Experian. Um, you, you have three credit uh, bureaus, by the way. Two of which, depending, well, at least up, up north, um, Experian and um, TransUnion are the, the big ones. Uh, there's another one that doesn't really affect anything, um, at least that I know of. I was told that a lot of it's used down south. I, I don't really know too much as far as that. But it's massively important to validate the debts. Go on those apps, Credit Karma, I'll, I'll preach it through the from the roofs. It was a massive tool to help me. It showed me exactly what was holding me down, just like we talked about. And what was important was you want to, because you can get away from those debts. I mean. It sucks for them, but a lot of times what happens is, whatever, whoever your previous bill was, say like whatever, once upon a time I had a Verizon bill, right? All of a sudden, they try charging me like $200 for something crazy, and then I'm like, screw you, there's no way, like, this this is highway robbery, I can't believe this, blah, 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 I was so angry, so I said screw them and stop paying them. And the next thing you know, that $200 turned into, I think it was like $950 or $1,000, which is absolutely insane. And and don't pay full price for anything because what happens is the, the, the original person that you have the debt for sells it after, right? And then they write it off as a tax write-off. And then they sell it to a debt collector who then calls you through the roof over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, so if you don't answer their phone calls and you 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 don't need, you don't decide to fix your credit now, if you wait seven years without contact, all of the all of your things that have been that long without any contact or anything a response from you will come off your credit bureau but seven years is way too long i mean you're gonna need a car you're gonna need an apartment maybe you want to uh, start investing in real estate it is massively important to um just be smart about your credit it it's everything so take advantage of all the tools you have and Better your credit score and make sure that every debt is truly what it is. Because if it's not, I mean, you can actually, I can't remember the exact name of it right now. It's, um, you can pretty much challenge. Um, you can write a, a letter 
asking the company to, you have, you have, it has to be a letter. You have to send one to the credit bureau and then you have to send one to the company itself. You can get whatever, um, uh, like scripts online. You can literally type up the script, uh, credit uh, report dispute, and it'll pop up a full script. You just put your information in that, and it, it'll be all self-explanatory from there. And then you send one to each credit bureau that it's on and then one to the actual debt collector themselves. Who buys the debt on, for 10 cents on the dollar? So that's why you should negotiate because, yeah, what do you want to pay? Say the debt's $1,000. Do you want to pay that full $1,000 when that debt collector's sitting there pretty with only a $100 bill? Uh, so what I would do is I would mention that. Ignore, talk to a manager and let them know that you know that they pay 10 cents on the dollar. The only one that doesn't acquire to, I believe, is medical bills. But either way, negotiate your debts off, validate that they're there, and send in dispute letters, one to the credit bureau, each credit bureau that's on, and one to the business. And if they don't respond within 30 days, I believe, it all gets wiped off, which is phenomenal, right? I mean, how, how much easier it could be? You, you pay whatever it is for a stamp right now, and next thing you know, it's all gone. Which, from there, your credit score, literally, I mean, I've seen my credit score go from garbage to 30 days later to I'm buying a brand new car happier than I could possibly imagine. I mean, who doesn't like driving in a brand new car? And fixing your credit score is going to get you there. Validate your debt. Authorized user. What is that? You can, I'm just going to go over this one real quick. You can essentially have someone that has good credit, that trusts you and whatever, or loves you, whoever may be, family member or whatever, um, be a co-signer on a credit card or you can hop onto their credit card as an authorized user, which will then better your credit score. So if you have any loved ones, or if you're not in real, real bad shape as far as whatever, find someone that you can hop on as an authorized user and that will better your credit score and count as a um, one of those three parts of the revolving credit score. Make more than the minimum payments. Why should you make more than the minimum payments? Let's use a car for example. You buy a car, your first payment, if you if you finance it, I mean, I, I suggest lease if you drive low mileage. I mean, honestly, leasing is a great way to go. I mean, I, I can get into it another day, but make more than minimum payments. Your, your first payment on a car is mainly just interest. You're paying this much, um, for a lot of people, you're paying this much of your actual um, debt you owe to the vehicle. If you start making more than the minimum payments, next thing you know, I mean, so what'll happen is you'll make, whatever, say your payment's 300, one month you pay 350, another month you pay 350, and 350, and 350, 350. Eventually, you won't have a payment at all. But if you continue on that path, you'll pay the vehicle off earlier, and you'll have, um, at the end of it, you could have, I mean, even if you went into the situation bad, or whatever, like upside down in your car, negative on, I mean, your, your trade-in was, uh, you owed money on it, it's the worst case scenario. Making more than the minimum payments can make a absolute game changer as far as your credit score and as far as the interest you pay, which will then lead to you having more money in your pocket because the more money you pay in interest, I mean, for example, with a credit card, right? If you, I know this guy back in the day when I had this job for whatever, I, I, it was selling tobacco and stuff like that. And this guy would literally come in and buy like a half a million dollars of cigarettes for his, whatever, his corner stores. And it blew my mind. But the funny part is he would pay it off right after, right? Which would get him all the points or whatever credit card he had happened to pay. Get him all the points, all the extra money without the interest, which is phenomenal. So make more than minimum payments and just strive to do more as far as all of it's concerned. The quicker you pay down your debts, I mean, honestly, I suggest negotiating it off. They pay 10 cents on the dollar. So why shouldn't you pay the same thing or a little bit more. I mean, if you have a debt for $1,000, you could possibly pay $100 and let them know that. Ask to speak to a manager. I mean, they're gonna fight you on it, right? But ask them what what they um, will give you for a, a number or say, listen, I only have 150 bucks, say it's a $1,000 debt. And so they buy it a little bit more, or 10 cents for the dollar. Literally be like, whatever, talking on the phone, say, listen, I'm not gonna pay as much, blah, blah, blah. I know you owe 10 cents on the dollar. You, you bought this debt for 10 cents on the dollar. Why should I pay any much different? Because the business wrote it off, you know what I mean? Like, they they didn't lose any money from you not paying that debt. I mean, they maybe lost a few bucks, but honestly, they wrote it off and paid no taxes that year. But negotiate it all off because 
you don't want to pay that full debt. So if it's a thousand, as I said, offer to say, listen, times are tough. I mean, even if you're balling, right, making tons of money, tell them that, listen, I'm really struggling right now. I only got like $150. Will that work? I really just want to get this fixed now. Otherwise, I, I don't know when the next time I'll ever be able to do it. I mean, it could be years, maybe seven years, right? Because after seven years, it's all gone. So use that to your advantage. Negotiate everything off. Be smart. Your credit score is so important. Make a debt relief plan. What is a debt relief plan? A debt relief plan is more or less like a budget. It's, it's the same thing, right? But it's just the extra step after a budget. It's you factoring in that you have X amount of debt, right? Now you're negotiating because you're doing it smart and you, whatever, or you've wrote a, um, a, whatever, a letter of trying to challenge the debt. So you want to follow all those steps first. You want to challenge the debt. Um, if they come back with proof that it is actually your debt, unfortunately you have to either make a payment plan or negotiate it off. If you're going to make a payment plan, just structureize it. Make it like a budget. You know what I mean? Like, Try and cut back on some of the things you can. I mean, you want to live below your means so that you can, what you do today will better you tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. So by making a plan, it will just simply, whatever, give you a day-by-day -day basis of what you need to do. Maybe it'll, it'll give you a reason to make more money. I mean, it'll constantly keep it in your forefront. You should honestly, and, and it's something I, I don't do myself as much as I should, write down my daily goals so that I can see them every single day. Not, not just daily goals, but goals in general. And as I, as I grow, I start to change the goals and change the goals. And I try to read it every single day because it keeps it in the forefront of my mind. And then because it's in my head or constantly in my head, I'm constantly thinking about it because I'm constantly thinking about it. Next thing you know, all of a sudden something happens and I'm starting to actually, whatever, follow the steps and get to, my, get to where I wanna go. I mean, this YouTube thing didn't all start out as, as it looks right now. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty hard, and I mean, the editing was like a. It looked like like Chinese to me. You know, like me trying to learn Chinese. It was just absolutely brutal. So make a plan. I hope you follow each and every single one of those steps because your credit is so important. If you don't believe that, you are very naive. It will affect your housing, your car, your possible job. It, it affects every aspect in your life. We live in a capitalist nation where your credit score pretty much affects your whole entire life. And if you have a good credit score, you can make leaps and bounds. I went from riding that crappy pedal bike to driving a brand new leashed Toyota uh, Camry all decked out, right? And I had my payments low. I mean, it was phenomenal, the difference in life. I went from freeze my off on a little pedal bike with a flat tire, right? Just struggling to being in a nice car, starting to get better jobs, right? Because now I get a car and then I get better job and then I get a little bit better job and then slowly but surely my life became this. And it's just gonna get better. Yes, it's, it's, it's tough and it's long and it takes patience and it takes almost arguing with the debt collectors or whoever it may be. And sometimes it can feel like shameful, you know what I mean? Like, because it's almost like looking yourself in the face and saying, look, look what I did. Or, you know what I mean? And sometimes it can feel real bad, especially as you, you struggle to pay. Because for me, it just didn't happen overnight. I didn't just snap my fingers and all of a sudden, all my credit debt was gone. Um, and my credit score wasn't great. It took so long. And at some point, it felt like it was impossible. So please follow each one of those steps. And I promise you, your life will be so much better and more prosperous. And one day, if you just keep following steps every single day, like I talk about in every video, you could live the exact life you want to live because you only get one shot at this. Life is tough enough as it is. If you work on yourself and better yourself and truly focus on who you are inside, I promise you everything else will be better. If you have relationship issues, if you have family issues, if you have financial issues, if you work on yourself, right? Read books, that, I mean, self-help books if you need. I mean, I've read tons of those. Educational books, I mean, you are the, you're at fault for almost everything that happens in your life. I get bad things happen, but at the end of the day, you put yourself in those situations, you mm -hmm. hung out with those people, you, you may have done whatever. So with all that being said, don't forget to do more to go on these, subscribe, see you twice a week, guys.